Okay, this one's fun. If you didn't know about it, just watch. So let's say I'm recording a vocal. I'm going to come in. I'll hear the pre-roll, and then I'll start recording here at bar two. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Mm, that's just beautiful. Okay, so I've got this thing here, but listen to the very beginning of that. One, two. So the one got cut off, right? One, two. It's not bad, but if I wanted to go back, I can't, right? Like I can't drag this audio back and catch that thing that happened there. Um, and let's say... I was going to punch in that first line, okay? So we're going to have it right here. Do the same thing. I'm going to punch in that first part. So let's do that right now. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, so aside from the fact that this is probably going to win a Grammy, the I the singer, myself in this case, started singing before the, the note started. So I sang this one, and I slid into it, but what actually got recorded? One, two, one. And guess what? We can never get that back. Isn't that sad? Well, that's the way things worked back in analog tape days. If the engineer f punched in too late, or if you came in early and he or she wasn't expecting that to happen then there'd be that blip right there where it actually started recording, but you started singing a couple of beats before. Very not kind of you. Um, but guess what? We're in a digital system, and we have ways of ensuring ourselves against this. Here's how to do it. Open up your preferences in Studio One. Uh, I've got that mapped. I think it's default to Command, Comma. So I do this all the time. You'll see me go whoosh, open up the preferences. Come to over here to where it says Advanced and then come to the audio tab, and you're going to see this setting right now. This, whoops, I can't, I can't do anything right. Uh, this is pre-record audio input. Turn that sucker on. Now, this may be by default set to something like five seconds. That's fine. The maximum, I believe, is a minute. So if I put in 60, it says one minute. If I put in 600, it still goes to one minute. Okay, so one, one minute is the maximum. But what does this mean? Well... This means that Studio One is now secretly always recording whenever the timeline is moving. So, for example, let's just press play here. All right, I'm going to turn the click off for a second. Um, you can see the timeline is moving, correct? But I haven't started recording. And I'm going to start recording at 11. Now I'm recording. Okay, great. I recorded something. Now let's stop. Now. Nothing's changed yet, right? We look at the screen and we say, oh, yeah, you recorded right here. Here it is. Now, uh, okay, that's fine. What's the big deal? Well, guess what? If I hover over this left side of this event and I drag it back, check out what happens. Look at it. It's magic. It goes all the way back to where I started playback. Don't believe me? Let's hit play and see. Means that Studio One is now secretly always recording whenever the timeline is moving. Holy smokes. That even recorded before I started moving the timeline. So for example, let's just press play here. So I pressed play there at bar eight. At, I am just discovering this for the first time. This is where I thought the pre-record would start, but it actually started all the way back here. If I jump over here and hit record, doodly doodly do. Come on, record something. And then if I drag that back, oh my goodness. It probably has the last several, s goodness, sorry y'all, I, I I didn't realize it did this much. Let's go back. It goes all the way back to where I started playback. Don't believe me? Let's hit play and see. Means that Studio One is now see Holy smokes, that even recorded before I started moving the time. So everything you just heard me say right there, like the holy smokes part, timeline wasn't even moving. Um, It was all, but it was, it's always kind of recording this one minute buffer of just whatever, whatever sound is coming into the track that's record enabled. So what does this mean practically? Well, from a simple standpoint, it means if I want to do that original thing here that we did at the beginning, we can. Let me do that real quick. Mm, one, two, three, four. So now if I go, I say, hey, actually, I was doing a hum at the beginning of that. Did you capture that? No, I didn't. But actually, I can just pull this back and I've got it. 
Mm, one, two, three, four. So that's an obvious application and probably the most common, but also, let's say I'm sitting here, I'm not recording, and I'm thinking through the song, and I come up with a line, and I think it's like, I'm singing something, and it's like, ba da boom ba ba da and somebody says, hey, that was really cool, what did you sing? I don't remember. Well, let's just hit record really quickly, and let's pull it back and find out. That's the cool thing that I sang. It was there all along. So all I have to do is have it record enabled. And Studio One is basically listening to me at all times, re essentially recording. And then if I press record, all of that gets captured kind of underneath and I can always drag it back. That is insane to me because I've known, I've known musicians and audio engineers who will, like in the old days, they would have... Like if they're recording to a 24-track tape machine, they'll have like a, a two-track other machine, like a DAT machine or something, just constantly recording everything coming through the board. So that if they captured something, if something really cool happened but they weren't rolling tape at the time, that recorder over there captured it. Now, whether it's something that would make it onto the album or it just captured that idea, it's like constantly going in the background. I've considered this for sessions as well, to have like a small little app um, like the Audio Hijack app that I use a lot to just record what's coming off of my board during a session, even so everything gets captured in some form and then have the recording session happening in Studio One. But now basically what I'm finding is if something cool happens and the mics are on and the record light is on here, Studio One is already capturing that. So if the drummer plays this sick fill and I say, hey, what was that? He says, well, I, I don't remember. What did I do? I was like, it was the third one you play. What was that? He's like, I don't, I don't remember. I hit record, I stop record, and then I just drag the audio back, and now I'm hearing that thing that he or she played. That is unbelievably cool, and I didn't realize that it's happening even if the playback head isn't going. I still can't get over this right here. I mean, it was the third one you play. What was that? He's like, I don't, I don't remember. It, that just, that's just cool. So how do we get there? Open preferences, go to advanced audio, turn on the pre-record audio input and set it to the maximum, which is one minute. Now you may say, why not more? I feel like if it was more than that, that's a lot of like, because it's saving bits of audio there and that would probably be a little bit too much. So this is just like, hey, something just happened, capture it and then rewind and it gives you a little bit of room there. It's similar to what we have on, in the MIDI world, which is where it'll do the same thing, but it's only MIDI information. Um, but this happens in the audio world, which is the world where I live in more. Um, so check that out. Turn that on. Honestly, you have you never have to use it, but in those handful of situations where it comes in handy, you'll be glad you had that setting engaged so that you can pull that thing back and capture whatever it was you forgot to capture in the first place. Thanks for coming on this adventure with me. I did. I knew it did one thing, and then I discovered that it did a whole other thing, which is... To be completely honest, I know I'm in completely biased, but when I started using Studio One, long before I ever had any real, real relationship with Personas, uh, I, there were always these little features that popped up that made my life a lot easier, and they were just clever and helpful. This is an example of one of those. Yes, we do big, huge, awesome things well, but we also do these little things that just come in handy occasionally. It's one of the many reasons why I love Studio One. I've used it for, I think it's over a decade now. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. My name is Joe Gilder. Be sure to subscribe. See you in the next one.